This is how the Home Guard started, with marching and drilling and not much else but enthusiasm. We drilled with dummy rifles. We had no uniforms. Some people thought we were funny. Just Saturday night soldiers in old clothes with a few antiquated weapons. Perhaps we still look funny to those unimaginative people who haven't yet seen how indiscriminate a shell can be. Here and there, units equipped themselves very fully. Some even built their own canteens and found willing help in the Women's War Service Auxiliary. Others were learning how to treat the wounded, practicing with ambulances they provided themselves. They knew that the less we prepared, the more wounded there would be. To keep units in touch, some of these volunteer fighters learned to signal with lamps and flags. Some of these lamps have punched a signal beam 50 miles through the night. In fact, these signalers know their gear forwards, backwards and inside out because they built it with their own hands. And they have actually relayed messages across 500 miles of the country they defend as fast as it could have been done by telegram. First, we had only our own rifles, and not enough of those even when others were impressed. Now we have Tommy guns as well. Too few yet, but more are on the way. In the last war, New Zealanders saw this machine gun from the other end. They brought home many like it as trophies. Now the German Spandaus are in service again but firing our 303 ammunition. Even a shotgun with a solid slug is deadly. But as guerrilla fighters, the Home Guard soon learned to make up for any lack of guns or rifles. Now, despite shortages, they are a real fighting force. Jammed tin bombs are deadly and demoralizing to the enemy at close range. Scrap metal, a plug of jet ignite with fuse and detonator, and there you are. The bomb fuses are tipped with a match head compound. Strike, throw, and... The booby trap is a hot favorite too. All that is needed is a buried charge of explosive and a rat trap to loose it off. For a practice demonstration, the charge is not laid under the gate. But of all the homemade weapons, the Molotov cocktail is dearest to the home guardsman's heart. It can be made at home of common materials, bottle, sacking, petrol, creosote, and heavy oil. Hidden men in camouflage suits stop a dummy tank with a landmine and plaster it with their Molotov firebombs. If after that, there is any fight still left in the tank crew, it's knocked out of them with Tommy guns. Here for a practice raid is an enemy guard tent on the left with the men on duty dozing inside. At center, an enemy sentry guards a small ammunition dump. Two camouflaged home guardsmen have crept up to start things moving. The object is to kill the sentry quietly and swiftly, to kill the men in the tent without loss to us, and to destroy the dump. Already another sentry on the hill above has been disposed of. section with Tommy guns and rifles, but no ammunition to waste, comes down to cover the activities of the low-level party 
whose first business it is to day the tent guard with gelignite bombs. Everybody gets quickly out of the way, while the leader fixes a booby trap to harass the enemy relief. Then the demolition party gets to work on the dump. must not carry out any demolitions unless directly instructed by army. If they are asked, they know how. Here they have only the ubiquitous gelignite to do it with, but they do it. job is destructive. They can build too, like this improvised pontoon bridge with soldered oil drums, planks and rope. Just 15 minutes work. Cross the bridge under fire, deploy on the other side, and engage the enemy. Just practice in the dangerous game of war. Not for fun, but because these men know they must be ready at a moment's notice to fight in earnest. soldiers of the Home Guard. They are doing their share in defending New Zealand. Mm -hmm. 